Hi everyone, welcome. I am here in the studio. It's New Year's Day and I'm getting started on the first painting of the year. And I'm going to talk to you more about what I decided to paint and why and what I'm doing. But right now I'm in the middle of the uh, underpainting. And all I'm doing is I put down some Derwent Ink 10 sticks and I'll put a link to these uh, in, the, in the comments. And I am just wetting all this down with water. A very, very simple wash. Alright, so I'm going to just continue on with this. Now I start usually with the lighter colors before moving on to the darker colors. And that keeps your colors cleaner. Yes, you can use alcohol. I'm using water just because that's what I... I don't know, because that's what I had handy. I'm embracing the drips. I don't mind if things drip and dribble and mix and mingle. In fact, that makes for a much more interesting start or underpainting. Uh, gives me something interesting to respond to. So embrace those drips. Don't be afraid of them. Don't try to stop them. Basically, my goal is to get just about every bit of this wet, and then I'm going to let it dry. I'm working on UART 400 grit paper. It is not mounted paper. So, it may buckle slightly uh, as it dries. I will then have to perhaps put it under some books to let it flatten out. Sometimes if I get the paper too saturated, it will buckle if it's not mounted. Uh, I'm trying not to get it too saturated so I won't have to deal with that, but we'll see as it dries. I'm just making some brush strokes kind of to uh, look like marsh grasses. And everything's wet. I, I love some parts that I didn't get uh, wet, but I kind of like this effect. So I'm not going to cover it up. I see some big drips happening. I'm going to just dab those. And then we're going to just let this dry, and I will be back. All right, now I am back. It's a, it's a couple hours later. I did the underpainting. This is the finished underpainting, and now it is dry. And I will say that it did slightly buckle. And so what, it, what I did while it was drying is I kind of lifted the corners and stretched it out. And then I added a, a couple more taped hinges just to secure the paper to the board a little bit better. But it dried flat, so really there was no problem at all uh, using a wet underpainting on unmounted UART paper. So now I'm going to start the painting on top of the underpainting, but I wanted to first talk to you about my inspiration for the painting today. And I thought, what am I going to do from the very first painting of the new year? And I thought, hmm, why don't I paint? the first painting I did last year, again. And I thought, well, that's a good idea because surely I have grown in a year, I would hope anyways, and by painting something again a year later, I can actually see, you know, where I'm at. Like, did I make any progress or how, well, how have I grown? And I kind of wish I did this 10 years ago and like every New Year's start off with the same exact painting and interpret in a different way. Wouldn't that be a fun collection? So you guys, why don't you start that as an annual New Year's tradition. Take the la first painting you did last year and paint it first this year. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first painting I painted last year happened to be a marsh scene. Um, I don't have the reference photo anymore. I don't have the painting anymore. So what I did is I printed out a um, photograph of the painting that I did. And I thought, well, I don't really just want to copy the painting. Um, I want to interpret this marsh scene in a totally different way. So what can I do to interpret it in a different way? Well, I thought, why not change the format of the painting? So that's why I decided to go with this 12 by 24 inch um, format, a panoramic format, which I think really suits the, the vastness of a marsh. And then I thought, you know what, I think I want to change the color palette too. I don't want to just copy the colors from last year's painting. 
So I'm feeling like I'm really into turquoise and chartreuse. I don't know why, but it's kind of my thing. And so I thought, well, that's how I want to start the new year. So um, I did an un I did a little test. So I did on UART paper a little color study in which I just put marks of the colors that I think I might want to use. And I could see that everything works together and it feels harmonious and I really like what's happening in the little color study. And then I'm going to then use those same colors for the painting. I did the underpainting with the same color palette, but I used those ink tents sticks which are basically just kind of pigment uh, like ink and when you wet it it turns into this really rich pigment so that's the underpainting for the pastel palette normally I like to choose my palette in advance but I'm going to keep it simple this time and I am only going to use pa pastels from this box of Terry Ludwig greens now they used to be sold in a set of 90 altogether now they're sold in th sets of um, three so you have your warm, your neutrals, and your cool. This at one time came in one big box. So I have kept them in the box uh, just so I could have them all together. So I'm only going to use the greens and blues, blue greens, that are in the box. And I, I have added a, a few lighter uh, value blue greens that, that were not in this box. And that's all I'm going to use. So now I'm ready to paint. And the first thing that I always do when I'm approaching a... Uh, wet underpainting is I look at it and I ask myself are there any areas that I want to preserve are there any really cool drips and things that happen that I really like and I don't want to cover up well I like how some of the drips down here especially sort of look like the grasses of the marsh so if I could use a really light touch and allow a lot of that to peek through that would be really interesting I kind of like the way the sky is with this yellow and some of these feelings of clouds. I didn't have that in my original study, but maybe I'll try to incorporate that. So the first thing I want to do when I start painting is start to reinforce the dark areas. The darks are not super dark, so I don't I kind of want to sneak up on it. I don't want to um, paint my darkest dark right away. I want to save my darkest dark for an accent. Because if I use my darkest dark right away in the early part of the painting, I have actually nowhere else to go with it. So I'm going over with this dark warmish green over the areas where I want it to be dark. So underneath these foreground grasses to begin with. And I'm using a very light touch. And how do you know when you have a light enough touch? When you can still see the colors underneath. And then I know that I am have a light enough touch so that's one layer in the darks. Um, I think I can go a hair darker in some of the areas, especially right in this foreground um, grassy area. Again, I want to be conscious of using that very, very light touch. I'm going to leave the, the value of these distant uh, banks. I like that color and value, so I'm going to match a pastel to that same color and value that's there in the underpainting. You don't have to reinvent the wheel if, if you like what's already there. And notice it is a lighter value than this because I'm going back into the distance. Speaking of going back into the distance, this dark blue is a little too dark for this area way in the distance. The value of this is too dark, so I'm going to go in with a duller blue-green and knock it back just a little bit. So I'm using the side of the pastel and I'm just going in and, oops, that's not supposed to be there. I'm just going in and modifying it by making it a little bit lighter and cooler and grayer. Here's another one that's even lighter. Well, one thing that I didn't talk about when I uh, did my initial drawing on this marsh is that I actually took out a ruler and I measured where I wanted the, the back edge of the marsh so that it was completely straight and level. 
Because in a marsh, if you don't get things completely straight and level, then it's going to look like rolling land rather than flat marsh. So I'm going to actually have to come in at the bottom and really make that straighter and level, which I'll do. So now I've pushed back that distant land mass, and I think I can actually go a little bit lighter with it in some areas. So it looks like there's a little variety within that. I don't want it to be a straight, um, unbroken line, which is, um, I call it a worm, but it just creates a feeling of tension, so I don't want that. All right, so now I have that in place. A lot of times, once I've established the dark and I've created that distant piece of land, I'll go ahead and paint the sky. And the reason why I want to paint the sky at this point in time is because it sets the whole feeling of light, the mood, the tone, the feeling, everything is about the sky and how it affects the land. So I'll, if I wait too long to paint the sky, then I don't really know how it's going to interact with the land. I like what's happening up here. So I'm going to use a, a very light blue-green and just very lightly go over this underpainting. I'm going to get a little bit lighter as I go, a little bit lighter and warmer as I go. Alright, so I'm continuing by putting in the colors in the sky, and I'm right now trying to decide how much of that underpainting I'm going to let show. I really like that yellow, but I'm not sure how that's going to work up in the sky. Is it going to be too yellow? I don't know. So whenever I'm not sure, what I do is I take a pastel that closely matches the color and value of the color that I'm not sure of. And I decide, hmm, now I have pastel there and I don't know if I'm going to use it or cover it up, hmm, but at least I have options. I think what I'll do is I'll just pull some of the blue down on top of it, again, just as a little modifier. The other thing I have to consider with the sky is do I want it to have a lot of action? And the reason why I have to consider this is because the marsh itself is a very busy landscape, right? With the grasses, it's very busy. So if I have a lot of busyness going on in the sky, maybe it's going to be too much going on. So a lot of times I think about keeping my sky a little bit more calm and simple. And then that way the not fighting for attention. I'm just putting a little more blue on top of the yellow. I've got this little area here where I didn't even put any uh, underpainting, so I'll add a little blue to that. And this area right in here. So I kind of like what's happening with the yellow peeking through here and there, so I'm going to just leave it alone for now. And then I'll decide just how much more, if anything, I'm going to do to the sky. Now I'm going to work my way down, and I'm looking at this dark line of the, of the distant uh, land masses. And I realized, even though I tried to break it up, it still looks like a solid line kind of cutting across my paper. And I don't really like that idea. So what I need to do is break it up even more. So the first thing that occurs to me is that what I could do is create some breaks by putting in some land that's farther away, like more distant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very, very light value, pale, light value, um, kind of a coolish blue, and I'm going to break up these land masses in a few places. And hopefully the idea, let's give it one more, the idea is when you look at it, now your eye kind of sees various uh, sections rather than one solid line. So basically what have I done was I've, uh, I've, make, I've made a broken line rather than a solid line. So this little area here breaks up that, that dark solid worm-like shape. I call it a worm. I want to break up the worm. Now, 
Next thing I'm going to do is work on the grasses and the water. Remember there's water in here and the, the water reflects what's happening in the sky so I'm going to use those same colors. But before I put in any of the water I want to put in some dirt. I like to say dirt meaning what is underneath the grasses. If I could put color underneath the grasses then it's going to make it a little more complex and a little bit more interesting. And I really love this bright, uh, really bright yellow so I'm not so sure I want to cover all that up. So again, I'm going to go back to that idea that if I can match the color and value to what is in the underpainting, then I can preserve it. This is a little bit darker than what's there, but it's close enough. Here's another slightly darker. Again, I'm trying to be conscious of keeping a very light touch. I, I remind myself that the right touch is a light touch. Ooh, that's very dark. I didn't realize that was going to go on quite so dark, so I'm not going to use it. Remember, the idea for this painting is to keep it, keep it simple and only use the greens that are in this box. Just adding a little complexity and variety by putting down what I call dirt colors. Now I'm at this point where I'm starting to get a little bit confused as to where my water is. And when that happens it means it's time to put in the water so that I don't lose my place. So before I put in the water I'm going to reestablish some of the darker um, parts of the bank. <coughs> so I put in a darker blue-green water, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what's up in the sky and kind of visually flip it over. And then I know that what is at the horizon will be in the distant water and what is further up in the sky will be in the middle part of the water and what is not showing, which would be up here, would be in the, the, for, the foreground part of the water. And typically skies get a little bit darker as they go up, so I'll end up making what the water in the foreground the darkest water. So I'll start with that. Just put it in. I'm going to be covering most of this up with grass, but again, if I put it in, I'm not going to lose my place as far as where the water is and where the where the sky, or excuse me, where the grasses are. This is water in here, water back in here, and yes, if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's not exactly the way you had the water. A lot of times the water takes on a life of its own and goes in different directions, and that's okay. As long as it makes sense, you can move it, and you don't have to copy your photo or in this case my original painting. So it's going to be a lot lighter up at the horizon, so I'm going to use the lighter blue up at the upper parts of the water. And your water in a marsh area, or really any water, and we're going to be talking a, a, a lot about water um, in an upcoming month. One quick tip I can give you is you you want to have your water always level and and straight as an, a, a razor sharp at the upper edge of the water because water always seeks its own level. So if you make your water like this or you make it like this, it's not going to lay flat. So that's one thing you can do to make sure you have water that looks like it's in the land rather than just glued on top of it. So I'm just taking those blues that I've already used and putting them in the water. Now what I'm going to do is kind of come, come back and finish those grasses. And I'm just looking at the colors that I have available to me in this box of yummy box of greens. And I know that in the distance the greens typically are going to be duller and cooler and lighter, but I've got this really bright, warm, chartreuse yellow back there. 
And I and I one they I might say, or you might be thinking to yourself, but Karen, how can you use that bright, warm, intensely colored yellow in the distance? Um, well, this is partly an exception to that rule, but then on the other hand, I'm going to make use of the rule by putting in less detail, which is another way that we can create depth. So the grasses in the distance will have a lot less detail than the grasses in the foreground, so that will enable me to keep the, the colors fairly warm for the distance and still get away with it and still have it read as uh, grass or marsh in the distance. So you don't have to take every little thing or every little aspect of aerial perspective and use it for every painting. But as long as you have some things working, then you can kind of get away with it. Or at least try to get away with it. I'm adding some of a, um, what I would call a typical grassy green. Covering up some of that bright yellow. I'm going to bring some of it back, but I'm, put it, I'm covering it up at the moment. Also covered up my darks. I just did that. So when that happens, that's okay, but that means sometimes you have to go back and reinforce them. Put, bring them back, put them back in. I'm going to put them back in. And I'm using now, I'm in the foreground part of the grasses, so you'll notice that I'm using an up and down stroke with the side of my pastel, up and down. Whereas in the distance, I don't know if you notice, but I'm going to go back and reinforce so that you can see. In the distance, let's get a color so you can see it, I use horizontal strokes. Because in the distance, you're only looking at the tops of those grasses, whereas if you come forward, you start to see the fronts, the way they're growing. So I'm changing the direction of my marks, which help me create that illusion of depth. So I would say about three quarters of the way through into the painting, about here, I'm going to start to change the direction of my strokes. Reinforce the darks just a little bit more because what's happening is, look what's happening. This dark is darker than the dark in the foreground and that makes it come forward. So I have two things that I could do. I could either make that lighter or I could make this darker. And if I make this darker, then this is lighter, so then it recedes a little bit better. Still actually is a little bit too dark, so I have to sometimes do both. And so I will make this slightly lighter if I can get a lighter value. And just cover up that dark. It's a little bit too dark. Same with this one, for the distance. There, that helps push it back a little bit more. Now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to pull some of these grass marks down into the water. So I want to start to create a feeling of some of those grasses being reflected into the water. So I'm going to start off by pulling them down with my fingers. One of the few times I'll actually put my finger into a painting. And you can see that starts to give it a really nice watery feeling. And then I'm just going to go back over and create some current lines with the edge of my pastel so that you can see where the water starts and where the grasses begin. I'm just going to sneak a little bit of water down in, into these grasses and then come back and pull some of the grasses up over oops, the water. So you put a little water in, you put a little grass in, you put a little water in, you put a little grass in. You just go back and forth till you get it to the feeling that you want. I'm coming to the part in the painting where I would typically need to slow down. Okay, this is the part where I have to examine it, the painting. I have to examine the way the eye is moving through the painting. Is the eye going where I want it to go? So let's do that together, because that's how I'll determine how I need to finish the painting. So your eye is always naturally going to follow a pathway, uh, and a waterway or, or a roadway. It'll want to follow it. So if my eye follows this pathway, where does it go? Well, it kind of goes here, 
this bright yellow kind of pulls me here so I really like that I love that right there so I'm gonna leave that and then see this spot here that was just part of the underpainting my eye jumps to that so I'm gonna leave that and then I want to pull the eye back over here now the yellow in the sky is starting to do that but I could enhance this area a little bit more I can add a little bit more detail to the grasses um, and so that's what I'm going to do let's just enhance this area by enhancing what I mean is I'm going to just uh, add a little more clarity so I'm going to add some harder edges um, maybe a, a light against a dark I'm adding areas of contrast um, I really like this um, spot of yellow but it's almost too too linear too much of a straight edge so I'm taking a bright yellow and just very gently breaking that up so I still have it but it's not just like it's not like in your face I really feel like to get me to this area I might use a little bit more water so I'm going to just put a sneak of water back there so you have another reason to go back into the distance and I think I need to put a few more brighter pieces of grass right down in this area in the foreground area I, I, I kind of like the way in this particular painting is a little bit more of an abstracted landscape so it's not a lot of detail I mean at this point I could keep going and paint in lots of blades of grasses and make it very uh, or almost more of a realistic approach but I sometimes I, I really feel like I would love to have that permission to just leave things alone and not mess with them too much and whenever I get to that point and I'm not you know I, I'm not sure if I'm done but I think maybe I wouldn't maybe I like it more abstracted maybe I don't want to paint in every blade of grass uh, maybe I don't want to paint a lot of grass period what if I just left a lot to your imagination if I want to give that a try then what you have to do is give yourself permission to stop because the more we go the more we add the more we have to add what do I mean by that the more we start adding the more we have to add to bring the rest of the painting up to that same level of detail so if I can stop myself and say you know what that's enough detail your eye is moving throughout the painting it's got a nice mood um, it's got an interesting feeling then why not stop now maybe you're not done but if you keep going and you don't give the painting a chance to just rest so that you can observe it and, and analyze it, then you can't get it back, if that makes any sense. So give yourself permission to stop, especially when you're not sure if you're done. Give yourself permission to stop. And I will give myself permission in just a second, but I, I had this idea. Remember earlier I said I, you have to make that upper edge of the marsh completely straight and level so I'm going in with a hard pastel a new pastel and I'm pressing down quite hard at that upper edge of the marsh so that I can really solidify that top edge of the grass so that it really looks flat and in the distance so I'm just pressing hard I'm shouting with my pastel to give that that mark at the top edge so I'm going to stop now and I'll evaluate it I might do more but maybe I'm going to leave it as a more abstracted uh, feeling to the painting but there you have it my first painting of the year and I'm really excited for a, a great new year with you guys